cliche, but you know what that really means? Have anybody ever been burned before? Don't feel good, do it. No, literally, have you ever been burned before? Got fire and been burned? It does not feel good. It is hot. First thing you do is jump away. And God is saying, we're telling God, I'll be the sacrifice. Oh, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to lay there and get burnt up. We sure we want to say that? We know what it costs to say that? Think about this. If you want to flip a house, you have to already have the money to buy the house, right? But you then also have to have the investment money now to remake the house. And oftentimes you have to spend more money to reinvest in the house than it is to purchase the house. Why? Because now you got to knock down walls, old walls. You got to tear up the floors. You got to repaint. You got to redesign the house because the house is no longer relevant because it's still stuck in the past. What is God saying? If you're the house, he already purchased you with his blood. He already purchased you with his blood, but now he has to remake you. Now he has to tear down walls in your life. He has to rip up the floors of your past. He has to paint all up, over all your wrong decisions and bad mistakes that you've done in the past. And that's not an easy t- a process. I was watching, uh, what's the one with the little Chinese lady and the dude that does the, the fixer upper. There you go. I was watching fixer upper and the first thing he does to knock down the wall, he doesn't just come up there and just push the wall. He takes a sledgehammer and comes in already banging down walls, tearing stuff up. That's God in your life. God is like, I'll tell you something, God never said he was going to be polite. He never said in my remaking process of you, I'm going to be nice and gentle and polite. Because this is the thing. We've done the, we've done the mistakes. We've made the decisions to get in the place where we're at right now, if you want to be honest. We don't want to talk about that. We made decisions to get where we are now. And so God has to now come in and clean us up. And that's not a pretty process. Amen? So now, what does it cost him to tear down the walls in your life? Have you considered it? How much does it cost to rip up the floors? Amen? Sometimes carpet just won't do. You got to get new hardwood floors. Well, what I mean by that is this. Sometimes the old <laughs> won't work in the present. You're trying, to, you're trying to hold on to an old relationship. You know, back in the 70s, that shag rug looked pretty good. And you're trying to stay with that shag rug man of yours. And God is saying, come into 2017. I got better for you. It's time for you to up late. Stop hanging out the past and hanging around the past when it's time for you to re- be remodeled. No, we don't want to hear that now. We don't want to hear that. We, we can see it happening, but we don't want to experience it happening. It's easier for me to see it happening even in somebody else's life. Girl, you need to leave that man. Well, shucks, you need to leave him too. We can tell our friends what they need to do, but we don't want to deal with what we got to do. It's so easy for us to remodel somebody else, but we don't want to go through the process of knocking down our own walls. Amen? And many of us find ourselves in situations that mirror Paul and Silas. You didn't think doing the will of God would get you lied on. You didn't think that helping somebody else would cause you pain and suffering. Paul and Silas did the will of God by casting the demon out the girl and it got them persecuted. It got them thrown in the jail. It got them beaten. How many of us will sit there and take one strike? I don't see no hands. We won't take one. You ain't about to touch me. Okay. Amen. Let's continue. Some, you got to understand that, you know, sometimes your cost is someone else's benefit. And sometimes you got to understand that I have to go through this fire. Why? Because somebody else has to be benefited. Who is benefiting from your stripes? I pray that somebody's benefiting from your stripes. I don't want what, what, what you don't want is being beaten for no reason. As a child, have you ever got beaten for something what somebody else did? Those are the worst beatings. I'm getting beaten for nothing. If I'm going to get beaten, it's because I did something or somebody else did something. 
Have you ever took a beating for somebody else? Looking out for them? Oh, well, let me tell you. I, work in the high, I worked in the high school last year, and one of the codes is, oh, well, I'm not going to snitch. You can suspend me. I'm not going to snitch on them. Dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Dumbest thing ever. Oh, he stole a cell phone. I'm not going to snitch, even though, you know, you gave it to me, and I got caught with it. And so you're getting beat for somebody else. And he benefiting. But he the thing is not, it's not, is he's not benefiting for the right way. He's benefiting for the wrong thing. Amen. Okay, let's continue. You got to understand, you got to count the cost. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. But as I read it, I always thought something different. And God kind of revealed this thing to me this morning. Well, this week. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And all the prisoners, prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, so everybody say immediately. immediately. All the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Oh, man, sounds good, don't it? Sounds like, oh, they sang praise to God. They was in the prison and God just freed them just like that. Just because they praised God. Amen. But let's keep reading though. It says this, and the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we all are what? The second thing God wants us to understand as we go through the fire is praise doesn't always take you out the fire. But praise will always take you through the fire. Say that again. Praise and worship doesn't always take you out the fire. It's not necessarily meant to take you out the fire. But what it is meant to do is to bring you through the fire. He's meant to bring you through the fire. One of the biggest uh, tricks that Satan does for each of us is that he'll try to give us an escape out of a trial that God put us in. You don't, you don't, you don't understand what I said. One of the biggest tricks of Satan is to give you an out for a trial or a situation or a circumstance that God put you in himself. That he wants you to go through. And Satan will say, oh, here's the trap door. You can get out of it. Get on out of it. You ain't got to go through this. And this is what he'll do. He'll mask it as an unanswered as a pr answer prayer. God, change my situation. Change my outcome. Say, say, listen to them same words you have. And he'll give you a way out. Girl, you don't need, okay, well, well, this is your way out. You can just move away. Just move away. Here's the open door. You got a job. They want you to come. They paying for your housing. Here it is right here. And he masked it as an unanswered prayer. So now you confused with God. Well, shoot, this is it. Then let me get out of this. I ain't got to go through this if I don't want to. I'm the chosen one of God. I'm not supposed to suffer. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And so we'll fall for the escape door. We'll fall for bait and we'll fall for Satan's bait. And what we'll do, we'll leave God in the midst of a storm. When it was his storm that he created. Think about this. I just thought about this. When the, when the disciples were on the boat. And Jesus came walking up on the water. Was it calm? Y'all yeah, didn't read your Bible. Well, let me tell you. When, when Jesus was walking up on the water, it was, he was walking up in the midst of a storm. And the boat was rocking to and fro. And they looked down and said, who was that walking on the water? And they said it was Jesus. It, well, and Paul was like, well, Peter was like, if it's Jesus, if it's you, then let me walk out with you. But it was in the midst of a storm. It wasn't a sunny day. Their life was being threatened. And here comes Jesus. What about the time when Jesus was asleep up under the boat? And the storm was just raging. About to flip over the boat. And where was Jesus at? Man, can we, can we we got to put two and two together here. Jesus was asleep in the midst of the storm. So what you worried about? In other words, he was right where he needed to be. And not only that, the disciples was right where they needed to be. As long as they was with Jesus, the storm couldn't do nothing with them. 
So then why do we run when things get hard? Why do we want to get away when things don't go our way? Y'all not speaking this morning. It's okay. It's a hard word. I understand it was, it was hard for me and I had to change how I thought about things. I had to change every time I thought that something went wrong. It ain't the devil. Have you ever thought that maybe God put that no in your way? Have you, have you ever thought that God put that person to decline you? To reject you? He set that person up so that he can make you? God, Jesus, look at Joseph. Thank you, Lord. How many people mistreated Joseph? They threw him in the pit. They threw him in prison. God set all that up because he knew one day he'll be, a king. He'll be second in command. So what if Joseph was just to give up, say, man, bump all this. Bump what you gave me, God. I know you told me that I was going to be a ruler. I, I know you told me that everybody was going to bow down to me, but I didn't know it was going to take this. Potiphar's wife lied on him, just like they did Paul and Silas. Thrown into prison, left there for years. He could have just gave up. He could have just ran, like some of us are doing. Well, you don't get into grad school. Well, you don't get the job you want to get. When somebody else take your man, you just ready to go. <laughs> Let me go deeper. When you make a mistake and get pregnant, now you're just ready to give it up. All because of a mistake and God is saying, and then this is Satan, here go your way out. Go to this clinic. That's your way out. No one will ever know. That was, that was God because that wasn't in my notes. Amen? And so we got to understand that pray, that in, like for example, in Genesis, in Genesis, uh, during the days of Isaac, you know, there was a famine in the land. And one of the things when he went to Abimelech, he said, God told him, said, don't go down to Egypt. Even though it's a desert where you living at right now, dwell in this desert. I know it's scarce. I know it's hard to find stuff. I know everything you're looking for is in a dry place, but don't go down to Egypt. Why? Egypt was in a surplus. They was down there partying. They had more than enough. And God told him specifically, don't go down to Egypt. What about Job? Job was in the midst of everything going wrong in his life. Not only did his kids die, his wife, well, his kids, his family, his property. Then his body was wrecked with disease. Satan present that, present that out through his wife. Why don't you just curse God and die? You know that they say she's she's no, no longer, you're not gonna be no longer in pain. That's what they say for funerals, right? I'm just being real. Why don't you just curse God and die? You don't have to deal with this no more. That's the way out. What about Jesus himself after going for his 40 days on his 40 day fast and he was hungry? And Satan said to him, Hey, since you're hungry, why don't you just turn these stones to bread? You got the power. It's <laughs> you and God the same, so it'll be your will. Just change something a little bit. And he had to realize that's not the will that I'm supposed to accept. Amen? What trap is Satan tempting you and masking you as an answer prayer? What refining process is Satan trying to steer you away of? This morning, God is saying to each of us, stay in the fire. Just because there's a way out doesn't mean that you need to take it. We look at, and, and I deal with this a lot because me being here for, Jesus, 20 years? Yes, uh, Shana, y'all done been here almost 20 years. Rain, you done been here longer than that. <laughs> but we have. We've seen people come and go. And this is not a pitch to stay in Tallahassee. This is a pitch to follow God. Just because something is a greater opportunity in a different place doesn't mean it's for you. What greater opportunities mean greater temptation, greater sin, greater traps to fall into, and then greater consequences to deal with. You better follow God. Amen? Amen. Okay, all right. Amen. Daniel didn't leave the lion's den when they placed him in there. He could have left because the lions weren't doing nothing. 
just being real. The three human boys, they, they could have left that fire. They had the son of man appearing right there with them, but they didn't leave. David could have ran from Goliath. He didn't have to fight Goliath, but it was the will that he had to accept. He didn't like it. He was, it, was, it was fearful. It was uncertainty, but he had to go through it. Why? Because on the end of the process was what God had for him. What does God have for you on the opposite end of the process? Amen? In the midst of our trial, in the midst of our storm, we must understand that praise and worship is our lifeline. That's our connection to God. And so many of us are in the midst of the storm, we're in the midst of our wilderness, and we don't want to praise God. We don't want to worship God. And that's why you feel so isolated. That's why you feel so, I'm so by myself. You have lost your connection. Jeremiah says, I knew you before you was born. I created you before you even got in your mama's womb. So why are you not talking to me? And you wonder why when you go through, you're trying to blame everybody because you don't feel like nobody's on your side. And it's not that nobody's on your side. That you don't have the right one on your side. The Bible says greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Psalm 71 verse 20 and 21 says this. You have allowed me to suffer much hardship. That's what David said to God. You allowed me to deal with this. You allowed me to suffer much hardship, but, but, everybody say but. But you will restore me to life again and lift me up out of the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor, says David, and comfort me once again. Think about that. So the praise, this is why it was important for him to sing praise unto God. Because he needed to make sure that, God, I know I'm doing this for you. I need you to sustain me. I need you to fill me up. Amen? Amen. Okay. Can I, can, let me go off on a side note. This is why you never, ever miss an opportunity to praise God. Don't ever come into this sanctuary or any sanctuary and not lift your hands. You are doing yourself a disservice. Amen? Amen? That's why you say, fill me up. Recharge me, God, so I can go out and deal with life's issues. I can deal with the, with the wiles of the enemy. I can stand against. I can have my helmet on, my helmet of salvation on, my breastplate of righteousness. This is why I praise the Lord. It's not about an ego. If you got an ego, that's your problem. That's one of the walls that need to be torn down. Amen? Amen. Let me read real quick Acts chapter 16. Let's keep going. Verse 29. Oh, Jesus, I lost my place. Acts chapter 16, verse 29. And I'm going to just finish this little story out. Everybody got it? Okay. 16, verse 29. Look at this. Then the jailer, remember now, the jailer's about to kill himself, right? Because he thought everybody left. Then the jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell before Paul and Silas. Then he escorted them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the message of the Lord uh, to him along with everyone in his house. He took them to that same hour by night and washed their wounds. And right away, and him and his family was baptized. He brought them out brought them into his house, set a meal before them and rejoiced because he believed God with his entire household. You want to know why Paul and Silas didn't leave the prison when they could have? You want to know why no one else left the prison when they could have? Because it would have cost a man his life. That jailer would have committed suicide, never getting the word of God preached to him. All because they want to be free. That man could have died and gone to hell. And not only that, his whole household, his children would have never got the opportunity to hear the gospel. So they remained in the fire so that man could be saved. This morning, understand that God is using the very thing that you're struggling with to save somebody else's life. Amen. Paul and Silas was on their way to Macedonia, but a jailer was on the mind of God. 
a prison guard was on the mind of God. So he had to orchestrate everything that Paul and Silas went through. He had to cause them to do the will of God and cast out a demon and then get beat for it and get thrown in jail for it just so he can be in place to save a, a prison guard's life. But Paul and Silas was willing to go through the fire. Are you willing to go through it? Are you willing to be refined? Are you willing to go through, like you say, the beat of sacrifice on the altar? Not only so God can save you, so that God can save other people. Think about it. Who went through the fire just so that you could hear the gospel? Who went through it just so that you could be saved? Let's go past church. Who went through it just so that you can make it through college? Who went through it just so that you wouldn't be in jail right now? Who sacrificed? Who, who took the disadvantage road just so that one day you can be advantaged? And this is the thing. Thank you, Jesus. The prison guard didn't know nothing about what Paul and Silas did. That wasn't his business. His job was just to guard them. He didn't know nothing about him casting out a demon. He didn't know nothing about his assignment to go to Macedonia. It didn't matter to him. So a lot of us, the things that we go through, we got to understand it's more than just us. And the things that other people have gone through for you to sit where you are, you don't even know. This is why you got to praise God. Because he knows all and sees all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me continue. Paul and Silas was on their way to Macedonia, but a prison guard was on the mind of God. So Paul and Silas had to be drugged through the city, beaten with many rods, thrown into prison so God didn't use him to save somebody. Now I understand why it says in Romans 8 and 36. I, I've been reading this for a long time. I get, the, I get the meaning of it now. Romans 8, 36 through 39 says this. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted for sleep, sheep, for the slaughter. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. In him who loved them, who loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present things, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter how hot the fire gets. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go your way. It doesn't matter if you don't feel like you can't take it anymore. Just because you're in it, that means God will break you through it. That was a good place to clap right there. That was a good place to praise God. Because now I know, now I understand, no matter what I'm struggling with, God is there with me. I'm not doing this thing by myself. I'm not struggling because of, because, of, uh, because of what I've done wrong. The Bible says this. Yes, you do face consequences. But all things work together. All things work together for them that love Christ. This is why you got to be saved. Amen? Finally, as I close, I studied and I read through the last part of the scripture and I began to ask God the question. I said, God, why did you choose to loose the chains of the people? If they were never meant to leave the prison. I said God why. Were you keep. Why would you free them. But keep them bound anyway. Because if you think about it. Paul and Silas. Got freed from the prison eventually. But the rest of the prison guards had to stay in there. But God loosed the chains anyway. He loosed their chains. But then had to keep them in the prison. And God said to me you know. Understand, it's not the prison that kept them bound. It was the chains. Say it again. It's not the prison that kept them bound or held them captive. It was the chains. In other words, it's not your situation that's keeping you bound. Many of us look at our situation or the thing that we're going through as the thing that holds us captive. But God is saying it's not the situation. It's you. It's not the situation. I got to free you. And this is what happens. If I free you, you can remain in the situation and still be delivered. Yeah. 
Stop praying for your situation to change and pray that God delivers you out of your situation. And what I mean by out of the situation, deliver you out of being held by the situation. I prayed for six years. I was at a school that me and my, my boss did not get along. And I prayed and prayed, God, change me out of this. God, promote me. God, promote me. And every year I got stood, put right there. I didn't move. This lady that couldn't stand, my, couldn't stand me. I don't know why. But I understood now that God, I have to be delivered. And that's why I appreciate my pastor because he kept, he kept telling me, it's not about her, it's about me. He kept saying, don't fail the test. God is testing you, not that person. He's trying to train you, not her. It's not about her, it's about you. And a lot of times we are asking God to take me out of the situation, change my life, change, my, change the things I deal with. I'm tired of dealing with the same thing. Why? Because you keep failing the test. Sorry, it sounds like I'm yelling, but God is passionate about this. We are stuck in the wilderness. Why? Because we won't pass the test. We won't pass the test to get to the promised land. How hard is to pass the test? Well, let me tell you how hard it was. The whole generation of children went into, from Egypt to, 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 through the wilderness. How many people made it out the wilderness? Because a generation complained and complained and complained and complained until God killed them off. So I ain't stand up. Bernie, stand up. What if these are the only two that make it to what God asked half of them? What a shame would that be? Out of this entire room, the only two that make it to what God has for them. You see how serious it is that we got to grow and get to the past, the test that God has for us? Because this is the thing. It's, it's, God has it for us, but it's our decision to change in order for us to make it. What kind of passing rate is that? want to be them i don't want to be the multitude that didn't make it the bible said it, it, it grieved him that he even brought them out because they just complained they complained and asked god to change stuff and god i, I wanted to i could have had meat back there in egypt i could have had all this other stuff and god said I'm, I'm tired of this i'm done with them because they won't change the mindset i can free them out the prison all day long but the chain is going to keep holding them back Amen. Have you ever seen a prisoner walking out in public with his with shackled? But that's what a lot of us look like in the spirit. We walk freely every day with the opportunity. We have the key. We have the key to take our chains off, but we rather walk around shackled. Asking God, free me, Jesus. Take these chains off of me. God has said the key is in your hand. Go through what I have you to go through so that I can break these chains off of you. Amen? You may, uh, well, y'all already standing. So everybody else, come on and stand. <laughs> Told you I won't be alone. But the final scripture God did give me that I must share with you is this. I was riding home last night. I had to work late, late, late. And I was riding down I-10 and God brought the scripture of Psalms 23. Very familiar. Everybody know it. Everybody should be able to quote it. We should be able to quote it. But at the end of that verse, it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He says, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David never asked for the valley to be removed. David never asked God, help me to get around the valley. I don't, want, I don't want to walk through this valley. David understood that in order for me to get through to my promised land, I got to go through that valley. This is my question. This is what God is saying. What is on the other side of your valley of shadow of death? What is on the other side if you just decide to go through it? Yes, it's hard. Yes, that fire is hot. Yes, there's uncertainty. I don't know what, what God's going to take you through just like you don't know what God's going to take me through. But one thing I do know 
is that we both going to be victorious. It don't matter what it is. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It said 10, 000, a thousand shall fall at thy hand and 10,000 at thy right side, but it won't come near you. How strong of a word that is. It don't matter what the devil throw. It don't matter what. I base my life on that scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against my family shall prosper. Nothing. I don't care how much you hate me. I don't care how much you uh, scandalize my name. You can lie on me. You can tell the boss lies and it all has happened. And I still come on top. I look at it. I went through it. I went through. My boss scandalized my name to the superintendent. I know she did. Because superintendent just never spoke to me. After one day, we kind of got into it. The superintendent never spoke to me again. I'm going to tell you the truth. That same superintendent is no longer in office. I'm, I'm not saying what happened. All I am saying is that God had, my, had me on his mind. Amen? And because my name is attached to God's name, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen? Amen. So this morning, God is saying we're dealing with three different things. Some of us, we're in a place now where, we're, where we don't, we don't want to go through the fire. And we're scared to go through the fire because we don't understand what it costs. We're not willing or we're, we're fearful of what it's going to take to go through to get what God has for us. And because of that, we have a double mind. Sunday, we, we all for God. Monday, we all for God. I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to do it. Tuesday, no. And then, and then something bad happened. That bill don't get paid. That lights go off. God, why would you put me in the dark? Have you ever been in the dark before? My light bill ain't been paid before. And, I, and this is the thing. Not when, I, not when I was married, when I was in college. Never, never, never. But let me tell you this, though. I thank God for that experience. Because I knew what it felt like to be in the dark. And I said, I'll never put my wife and my kids in that position. I ne if I got to go rake leaves, we going to have some lights. And so I thank God for that experience. <laughs> If Pastor Watch, I remember when our lights went off, we went to the, we just got a hotel room because I mean, I got no money. We don't have no money to, to fix it, so I just get the money for a room. No, light bill was $600. Hotel was $100 for me. So I said, okay. Because somebody didn't pay their third of the light bill. We ain't gonna leave it alone from there. They might be watching on live stream. Somebody didn't pay their half. So I'm like, man, but I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be lack. I know what it's like to go without. I remember going and, and giving blood plasma. Pastor always talk about it. It was my idea. I'm the one who went to give, just said, let's go give some plasma just like I had gas money. I remember going through that. Benny passed out, so he couldn't do it no more because he, he just, he can't deal with needles. Cut that piece. Cut that part. Cut that part. Cut that part. But, but this is the point. This is, when you got the mic, you can say what I'm saying. But anyway, but honestly, all jokes aside, I know what it's like to, to live without. I know what it's like to go through struggle. And I thank God every day. I didn't like it going through it. But I thank God every day for that experience because it has made me to who I am today. Amen. So, don't count yourself out just because you're struggling. Don't count yourself out just because you feel like you're by yourself. Just because you feel like you're in the middle of a hurricane. It's in those times God is making you and refining you to be the person you're supposed to be. I look at those struggles now, I mean, and I'm honest with you. When I was going through it on my job, I couldn't see it. And I prayed and God, sometimes I failed the test, but I never left God. I got frustrated, but I never left God. And God is saying this. Some of you are in this situation. You are in the middle of the whirlwind. 
and you thinking about walking away and God saying, don't leave. Praise and worship is your lifeline. You don't know how close you are to the edge of your wilderness, how close you are to your promise, your promised land. This morning, if that's you, you need to come to the altar. If you feel like, God, I don't, I don't know what it's going to cost, I need, you need to come down to the altar. Secondly, some of us don't understand that it's, it's, it's praise and worship that's going to create this lifeline. And so you have been disconnected from God in the middle of your storm. And you feel by yourself, you feel isolated, you feel by yourself, you feel like nobody cares, you feel like you're going through this whole thing alone. And God is saying, come on down to the altar. You don't understand that I'm that fourth person with you in the fire. You need to come down and rededicate your life. Rededicate your life. Reconnect through praise and worship, through prayer to God who can sustain you and get you through your fire. Amen? And some of us have chains that God needs to deliver us from. It's not the chains on the outside. It's not the chains that everybody sees. But it's those inner chains, those inner shackles that nobody knows that you're dealing with. That God is saying, today is the day of deliverance for he said, I can, I don't have to take you out to prison, but I can deliver you from the prison right now, right at this altar. If you walk down here now and get delivered from whatever you're struggling with. If any of those three things, God is tugging on your heart. Now is the time to come. The altar is now open. Don't think about it. Don't say, God, I don't know if it, uh, -uh just go ahead and take out and take the step now and walk. Come on, take the step now. Make the decision. Today, I got the change. Today is the, the day of a change for me. Come on and take that step. Come on and take that step. It's more. It's more. Come on and take that step. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's clap. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, as we come down, as we decide to make a change in our life. Come on, it's more of you. It's more of you. Come on down. Come on down. There's more of you. Come on down. Today, God is saying, you heard my message. You heard. I know where you are. I've seen you. And it's time for me to remake you. It's time for me to give you, to put you in the process. To make you moldable. I'm going to say this and we're going to pray. And my business... Me and my partner, we own a truck, and one, and one of the things that happened, I messed up. I kind of bent one of the bars on the truck, right? And I didn't know what to do. Because at first, I'm like, man, I don't know how to fix this. And I, so I tried to bend it, and I tried to put it against something, you know, a, a, a brick or something, and tried to bend this with steel. And it wouldn't bend. And I took it to this guy, and he put fire to it. He got this torch out. I've never seen it before. I've seen it on TV, but I've never seen him alive. He got this torch out. He put a little mask on. He had this gas thing and he lit it. And the orange flame, he turned it, he dialed it up. And it got hotter and hotter until the flame became blue. And he began to put it on that metal. And after a while, at, at first the metal still didn't move. He said, you need to stand back because it's about to get real hot. So I stood back. And I was about maybe 10 feet away from him. And I could start to feel the heat. But the metal wouldn't move. And I said, why is it ain't moving yet? Because I, I, I don't want you to break nothing. If it's not going to move, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He said, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Stay in the fire. And he kept that fire on that bar. And then all of a sudden, boom. It just, it just, it just melted. And it just moved to right where it needed to go. He didn't, he didn't struggle. He didn't struggle pulling it. The fire moved the bar where it needed to go. And God is saying, I know the fire is hot. I know you may be in the fire. I know it don't seem like it's changing, but just stay in the fire. Stay in the fire. Let me continue to refine you and purify you. And you don't know just soon, you don't know how close you are to being the play in the position God wants you to be. Amen. God, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, God. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we are in your will, God. We have decided to accept your will for our life, Lord God. No matter what it takes, no matter what we have to go through, Lord God, no matter what life throws us, Lord God, we are yours and yours alone, God. So help us, Lord God, to walk through the fire, God. Help us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord God. Help us to get through this wilderness experience to get to what you promised for us to have, God. 
God, you know the thoughts that you have towards us, God. God, you made us before we were formed, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, that you're never going to leave us, God, nor forsake us, Jesus. No matter what it looks like, God. So help us to have this connection with you, God. That no matter what we go through, our lips will always praise you, God. No matter how hard it gets, our lips will always praise you, Lord God. We'll never leave your side, God. Our lips will always pray. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that's within me, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. God, this morning, God, break every chain, God. Every innermost chain, oh God. God, break the chains that will deliver us from out of these situations, God. Deliver us out of these situations, Lord God. That even though the situation may not change, Lord God, because of who we are, old things have passed away and you have agitated us, Lord God. You have stirred us up, Lord God. We have been uncomfortable, God, and now we are new creatures. Until we are new creatures, God, we praise you, God. And we bless you, Lord God, for everything that you're going to do for us and everything that you're going to take us through, God. And I praise your name, God, because today we are victorious. Today we are victorious. Lord God, going in the wilderness, we are victorious, God. In the middle of the wilderness, we are victorious, God. And coming out, God, we are victorious. God, I bless you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, altar workers, go ahead and pray with them. As they're praying with them, I want each one of you guys praying. All you guys pray, pray. All you guys pray. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord for what we, what he, whatever he takes you through, God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah, Jesus.
while she's singing while she's singing if you're not saved or if you want to rededicate your life or you want to be baptized or if you're not a member you want to be a member of the family worship and praise center this is a church that's going places this is a church that's going places and it's not a physical place i'm talking about it's members who god has ordained each and every one of us for destiny he has ordained each and every one of us because we are family because we are under a head each and every one of us is going to be great in this earth and if you want to be a part of this church come on down we have watch care we have full membership if you're out of town you want to be a part here or if you want to be baptized you've never been baptized before i'm not talking about the little sprinkling on the head i'm talking about thrown in the water go down one way come up a different way if you've never been baptized you want to be baptized come on down amen This is Natasha all the way from Oklahoma. Full membership. What about a family? Come on, family. All the way from Oklahoma to be a part of family. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is Yuliana. Say, Yuliana got saved today. Hallelujah. Not only that, candidate for baptism and full membership. Hallelujah. Yes. This is Essence all the way from Jacksonville. Coming for full membership. What about it, family? Hallelujah. Mothers, come on in and greet our new members, our new family members. Amen. While they're doing that, we got one more. This is Charles all the way from Miami. 